Hello all, today I'm here with you for another episode of Bare Metal Distro Review, this series. Today, I have for you Alpine Linux, which is Linux minus GNU. In fact, a great story that was told to me on the Alpine forums, when we were up on the mountain, huddled around a fire in the cold. Sometimes they say that when you're up in the mountain and it's cold and you're huddled around that fire, if you listen very, very closely, you can hear Richard Stallman screaming on the wind saying, it's GNU plus Linux. It's GNU slash Linux. Yeah, they say you can hear that just on the wind. In fact, I think if you listen, wait, wait, you hear that? GNU, GNU slash, oh, oh wow, it's so true. So here we are at the proper Alpine desktop. Now, I'm gonna do this review a little bit differently because I feel like it's not really fair or to captures the essence of Alpine if I was to review it based on aesthetics and usability because Alpine is mostly used as a distro for like tainers and stuff like that. It's not really usually used as a desktop, although it is perfectly usable as such. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain some of the things I've done here and some of the decisions I've made. So to answer the first question that's probably going to pop in your head is of can it be used as a desktop distro? Absolutely. It absolutely can. Two things I would say about this though is that first of all, the repos are not as, they're not small, but they're not as big as what you might see in distros like Arch or Debian. The other thing is, is that while Flatpaks make this distro much, much more usable as a desktop distro than it would have been otherwise, you may run into certain issues with permissions and stuff like that. Nothing that's really a showstopper, at least nothing that I ran into, but the only thing that I ran into is that Brave browser, for whatever reason, wouldn't download to the downloads folder. That's fine, I can just use Firefox or Stead, or you can use any any uh, browser which is natively packaged in the repos, and that'll work just fine. Now, you might be looking also at the desktop here and thinking, I chose Mate, which is, might to uh, some of you seem like a bit of a strange decision. But let me explain why I, I, may, I went with Mate. So the reason I went with Mate is because I was having, I was using XFCE originally, and I had a heck of a time getting the WPA GUI to work. Now I don't need need the GUI, but it's definitely nice to have when uh, switching through uh, Wi-Fi networks and stuff like that. So uh, eventually I couldn't get it working under XFCE and I decided, okay, let's try and see how it works under Mate. Under Mate, it kind of works and I'll show you because while there's no icon for it, if I click the blank spot right here, it brings it up no problem and I can still use it no problem. However, when I switched over from um, XFCE to Mate, what I noticed is that some of the little issues I was having under XFCE with like the laptop not going to sleep and stuff like that, Issues that were so minor, I probably wouldn't have really even bothered to look into them that much. But when I set it up to mate, they all went away. And as a bonus, it's much easier to make mate look like a more modern desktop. I'm going to now, I'm going to show you guys exactly how you install mate on this system. Because when I get into the terminal, there's a few little things here that are different than other distros. So for example, you use Duas going to go do as and you can see the command to update it is apk update and then to actually run the update it's apk upgrade and yeah you can see that's running some upgrades in the system now a really nice little thing that um mine does is when you first so when you first install it you're going to be looking at a uh, terminal it doesn't come with a desktop by default but if you type in dash desktop it actually comes with a really usable script that lets you install any of the supported desktop environments. You can see here it lists GNOME, Plasma, XFCE, Mate, and Sway. Or you can even go with none. I've already got Mate installed. We're going to go with that. Now, I'm going to show you guys the real, the real reason that you guys would install this distro on something. If I go into top, even after running the updates, okay, I still only have 600 and... 47 megabytes of used memory. It has a very, very light 
And I don't have this set up as a, uh, a minimal install either. I'm using Mate with a bunch of different applications, like a web browser. I've got a LibreOffice on here, a bunch of other stuff, because I actually have this laptop set up to be used as my backup computer for making YouTube videos. It does a very good job at being a good, lightweight, and yet still very usable distro if you know what you're doing. There's two or three circumstances that I would really recommend Alpine. First of all, I think Alpine would be absolutely fantastic for bringing an old computer back to life. A, uh, it's absolutely great for like server applications like Raspberry Pis type things a, uh, and stuff like that. It's great for that. And it's very, very good for learning about Linux. There's a couple of things that make it quite unique and they kind of force you to actually learn about things. Like for example, it doesn't use systemd, it uses openrc, which is a much more um, open to the user in its system is what I would say. It also, it doesn't use the GNU utils, so it uses BusyBox as the, uh, the terminal, and it uses Duaz instead of sudo, which I absolutely love Duaz. So on the whole, I definitely recommend giving it a try. It's a pretty fun and pretty unique experience in the Linux world, and it's great for learning about Linux. And it would be great, too, for uh, kids to learn about Linux. That's where I think that this would really shine, is if you got a kid that's about 12 or 13 years old and you want to teach them how to use Linux, get them to uh, set up Alpine with a fully functioning desktop and following the documentation, because I think that'll be a great experience. So on the whole, this is a distro that I actually like, and I've had a lot of fun setting up, and I do recommend it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and pray every day.